Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Tuesday, which means it's time for a new FL Basics tutorial, FL 12 Basics tutorial, and this one's about the Fruity Balance, which has existed for a lot longer than FL 12 has. This is the Fruity Balance. It's two knobs. It's the balance, which is panning, and volume. That's all that it does. It is a panning and volume plugin. And I can feel already a whole bunch of you wondering, why would I possibly need a volume and panning plugin? Especially since just about every fader has volume and panning built into it. Oh my god. There's actually a lot of reasons. Even even reasons why you would use it in an effects insert. And not just because you want to use it inside patcher. Which is also super useful for when you want to automate things like volume and panning inside patcher. Independently of whatever thing you're using. That's, I mean, that's whatever. That's fine. That's good. But there's actually a bit of a more of a practical reason to be using it in reality. And this has to do with the role of the mixer fader and the role of the Fruity Balance and why you'd want to use the Mixer Fader for a whole bunch of stuff when really you should be using the fader, the, the Fruity Balance. And the big one that I can think of that matters a lot is sidechaining. So there are a lot of methods of sidechaining that involve using the fader. There's the ones where you just automate it, where you, you know, you're in a song and you want to sidechain it, so you create an automation clip and you sidechain it, and then that's your sidechaining for the whole song. You know, that kind of thing. That's side chaining. We, And now your fader's moving because it's side chaining. Now, the problem with this is that what if you want to change the fader later? What if you want to actually, like, what if, like, oh, I need to change whatever this thing is, this individual item that I have side chained, and I want to, oh, it's too loud in the mix now. I need to actually make it go down or up. Wait, I can't because there's a billion instances of automation that are telling it to be in this specific position pretty much all the time. I can come in here and I can change it. I can mix by just altering the level of the side chaining, or I can come in here and I can change the minimum and maximum value, which alters how high the, you know, the thing moves when it's moving and that kind of thing. But that's super obnoxious. It's much easier to just let the mixer faders be what they're for and actually mix with them. So the obvious solution is to have something else in the, in the mixing chain that does the job of the side chaining so that you can then change its relative level by changing its relative level. So you can have this guy be the one that's doing the side chaining and this guy being the one that's just doing regular business. Except that you don't see this thing automating, but it is actually still doing it. <laughs> This is a very old plugin, and in fact, when you see these kinds of things where you just see knobs and, and parameters, that's a specific interface designed for plugins that do not have interfaces. For example, if you ever used any of the MDA plugins, things like the MDA or, or the Tau Bit Crusher, those kinds of things, any of those guys where they don't have interfaces, they just have parameters, and this is just what shows up. That's all that that's all this particular interface means. That's how low profile this plugin is. It doesn't have an interface. It's just these two parameters that you can control. That's all that it is. And um, so yeah, that's um, cool, cool business for that. And so pretty much any reason why you'd want to alter the level of something in between something or any, or like without, you know, messing with the overall global settings of whatever mixer insert you're in, this is what it's for. And I, not, not only that, but it's actually another reason why you don't want to be side chaining using the fader. A fader, which I'm certain now is going to restart every single time in that position because it's where it is now. That fader has smoothing enabled. Which means, um, and by enabled, I mean built in hard coded. Because when you automate something, you actually have an option to, to engage smoothing, which is fun. You can come in here and you have options, you can set times, and that's a kind of cool thing. But by default, it's off. However, these particular faders actually still have it on. There's a bit of built in smoothing that you can't get rid of. And what that means, especially for something like side chaining, is that if I make some super specific um, side chain curve that, like, super very much depends on moving at a particular time in a particular place and doing what I tell it to do, that's not really going to work out. Because what will happen is that when you see, when you see, when you, like, I have something like this that's the side chaining, what's actually going to happen is something like this. That's more or less what it's going to do. Which, for most intents and purposes, you're not going to notice a difference because what side chaining is supposed to cause is still this. But if you're doing real mix intensive side chaining where you need it to do precisely what you tell it to do, this is a problem. And I mean, the reason why there's this kind of built in stuff is that when you have this ridiculous cut like this, what's going to end up happening is that it's going to cause a snap. It's going to cause a snap. It's going to click and pop and all kind of good stuff. But if you're side chaining things on stairs and kicks, then that snap and pop doesn't actually contribute to anything and you can't tell it's happening. That's why it's not an issue. But this this is what this this kind of smoothing is designed to to, you know, not do. 
designed to not do that kind of thing. And there are a lot of plugins or plugins and parameters in FL that do have varying degrees of built-in smoothing, but a lot of them can be turned off, but the faders can't be turned off. The plugin, the, the Fruity Balance, however, is old as shit and doesn't have smoothing enabled. And it will snap all damn day with you when you tell it to do this kind of, this kind of stuff. So that's why I use it for side chaining because when I make super specific actual like motions of things I want it to do, it will do it, and it will do it right, precisely the way they tell it to do. And so that's another reason why you would want to be doing that. And like like I mentioned before, if you want to use Patcher, if you're using Patcher for anything, and you're like, oh, I have a synth, then I have I have an EQ and or or distorting it, and then yeah, EQ. And then you want to, like, change the level of it. You could, like, alter this, I suppose. But if you had different layers and other just much more complicated things, it's a lot easier just to come in here and be like, cool, fruity balance. Awesome. And now you have volume and panning. And you can automate it. And it's nice. Now, the next thing you're going to be wondering after you've gone back to FL to try to find this, if you're in FL 12, is where the hell is the fruity balance plugin? It's actually, it's among a whole bunch of plugins that were sort of hidden by default. Not really hidden, but sort of not put in the list because they're old and they don't really want you to use them because they're old. And they would rather not to be supporting things that are old. Too bad. So the way you find this is you go into your, uh, wherever the, yeah, refresh plugins list and do a deep scan. It'll open up this thing, tell it to shut up, and then come, gotta go back to the actual separate window that this thing was. And do a full scan and it'll show you every single plugin, every single one that didn't... That didn't end up in the. You didn't need to see that. That didn't end up in the um, the actual plugin database. That this guy will like when you click on it, it'll put them in there, and uh, it'll show you where where they are. So in here somewhere, yeah, there's free balance, and then it'll show up in the effects list where it's supposed to. It'll probably it probably won't go anywhere. It'll probably be in its own just separate thing, or maybe it'll just be it'll be installed. I think I really didn't want to show you that. I forget where to show up, but it'll show up somewhere, and then you can move it around. And then I did, um, it'll show up as a, like a, a, a plugin list plugin kind of thing. And then I did the whole add the plugin database, and then I told it to be in into game because it makes sense because it's a game plugin, and that's where it is for me. And that's how you do that kind of thing. For more uh, in depth discussion on how the plugin scanning thing works, check out the uh, FL Twelve Basics video on the how third party VSTs work. Because for all intents and purposes, FO is, is assuming that this plugin is a third-party VST, even though it's already installed. So, there's that. Anyway, this has been a video about the Fruity Balance and what it's useful for and why you see me using it all the damn time. If you have any questions about that, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And as usual, have a nice day.